Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Draw with T. So, today I am fixing up the sketch of Tristan that I did in the last episode. So I basically just took a little picture with my phone and um, threw it up into Photoshop, and immediately I'm trying to fix, fix the eyes because they were bothering me so much in the last episode. There's actually kind of a lot about this sketch that was uh, bothering me. And um, to be honest, even looking at the, the final one, it's a little odd, a little weird, a little off to me. But like I said in the last episode, and I'll say it again, um, when you haven't done something for a while, in this case, I, I haven't drawn um, human faces in my style for a little bit. Um, and so everything felt stiff and I kind of forgot how to do things in a way or you know I for, you know the the feel in my hand kind of went away so that natural motor whatever skills vanished um basically you just gotta you just gotta make bad art you just gotta make bad art get it out and then move on to making good art if you uh just wait to be able to make good art it's just not gonna happen and all you're just gonna have a lot of bad art in your pipes so just get it out um, here I basically decided to re-sketch the hair, and it just didn't quite feel right. Um, I think I kind of over-sketched things a little bit here, which is usually, but, you know, I, again, the whole thing felt wonky to me, so that's often what my response is to when it feels wonky, is in Photoshop I ended up, end up just redrawing the whole thing, which is, sort of defeats the purpose of me sketching it, you know, in my sketchbook. The idea is I'm supposed to save myself time, so when I put it in Photoshop, I can just uh, quickly, you know, tune up a few things and then jump right into the ink work. Um, I was just having a bad time with eyes, because uh, I'm looking at that eye right now and it needs to be fixed, and I go back and I fix it again. Um, this is all kind of pointing to maybe I need to um, revisit how to do eyes. Yeah, here I am trying to trying to fix it up, and I kind of know what the problem the problem is, but I can never seem to un undo the problem. The far eye often seems right, but then when I use kind of a, a line to place the near eye, it just I, I can't seem to do it. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, I think that's probably about as good as it gets, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, here I am now uh, giving Tristan a bit more neck. Uh, she didn't really have have much. That's another issue of mine that I'm realizing. I don't draw necks quite long enough. Sometimes I don't even draw them in quite the right position. Oh, the plight of the artist. You just there's always stuff that bothers you, and uh, sometimes you go through phases where everything just bothers you ten times more than it rightfully should. And but usually that's when you're about to grow. So uh, here's hoping that I I grow more as an artist, and I'm not just going to be neurotic for for a month or something. <laughs> Oh well, it, it happens sometimes. Uh, you know, when you want to be good at something, it bothers you when you're not as good. And uh, it's just kind of natural that uh, at certain points, you know, your your eye for art advances, but then you know your your actual skill doesn't. So whereas before you weren't bothered or you didn't notice that you drew something wrong, and then you know suddenly you realize you are, and it bothers you because you don't quite know how to fix it. And uh, I did not think that the fix-up phase would take this long, but um, it does does take me a lot of time. I think, in fact, it took me probably as much time as the, the inking, which I'm about to start. So, uh, yeah, um, I apologize for the heavy rotation of the artwork and the heavy zoom-in that you're about to witness. Um, until I can afford a Cintiq or uh, an iPad Pro or a second monitor, um, this is unfortunately what we'll have to put up with if we, you know, if you guys want to see, um, see me ink stuff in these, in these videos, this is unfortunately what we've just got to put up with. Uh, I just don't have a means of filming this, so it's not as nauseous. Um, I would either need a second monitor to, um, you know, uh, offload and, and screen, screen capture it there, or I need a Cintiq to actually draw on so I wouldn't have to rotate it as much. Um, or an iPad Pro, which would give me the same results. An iPad Pro, uh, a new program, and um, an Apple Pencil. None of these options are cheap, um, and none of them are doable right now, so uh, that's just how it is. Um, fortunately, all my like tech is really starting to fall apart and fall out of date, 
It's, uh, you know, it was good five years ago, five, six years ago, but now things have advanced and the actual items themselves just, you know, they get old. They start falling apart a little bit, but, uh, you know, what can I do? Not really much until I'm rich and famous, <laughs> which, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Probably more than maybe not part, but, you know, whatever. I, I, I'm here to do art. I'm not really doing art for the fame. That'd be weird. That's not really, not really the greatest way to get famous, honestly. Uh, doing art, you know, better off getting in music, honestly, if you're going to be in the arts. Yeah, here I am just inking the rose, inking the ear. Um, not really much to say about the actual process itself. I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Just watching me ink and uh, how I do that even sped up. I think you guys get a pretty good gist of uh, how I do things. And that the answer is I uh, lay down a line, hate it, uh, control Z, do it again, um, slightly erase it, you know, modify it, erase as I go. Um, you know, the lines, the, the longer the lines, the more wonky they are, and that's just unfortunately the nature of uh, not having a Cintiq. I basically have to draw blind, which, um, you know, maybe I don't have to explain that. Maybe that's pretty well still understood. But as I've said before, I think I see a lot more people um, working with iPads and Cintiqs now. So I kind of feel like this is very quickly going to be a dated thing and a dated problem where, you know, you had to learn to draw blind like you did with, uh, you know, the Intuos, the Bamboo, and, you know, those sort of um, screenless tablets as, as they were. But nearly done now, basically doing the armor, and I was quite proud of myself for being able to draw uh, the, these intricate parts of uh, Tristan's armor without actually looking at her reference. I mean, I did later, um, and I actually got all the details right, so I was very proud of myself, because uh, you know, I've, I've often changed up her design a few times, and it's gotten a bit complicated, as you can kind of tell by the pauldrons, um, the shoulder armor. If you're wondering what pauldrons are, I think most people, most nerds know what pauldrons are. You might know, not know the difference between spalders and, and pauldrons. Um, to be honest, actually, I think there's a lot of debate on, on that point for some people. So let's not get into spalders versus pauldrons here. But yeah, just uh, finishing that up and then be moving on to color. Now, originally, I had just planned to... Um, Oh gosh, this is the worst bit of inking I did in this entire thing. I could not get that curve right, and the only way I could remedy it was to basically uh, just hack at it, just you know, slowly build it up with uh, ink work, which never looks good. It always looks blotchy, and I hate when I have to do that kind of blotchy ink work on uh, kind of a major point of interest. It's one thing if you kind of do it, you know, at the corner of a cape, nobody's gonna see. But uh, it's another thing if um, you know you got to do it right on top. Anyways, um, oh yeah, this is where I refer to the reference at last, and I was quite proud that I managed to nail all the major details. Um, so now we're moving on to color, and originally I was just going to flat fill this. You know, flat fill it, maybe throw a little, little bit of a tone on the background, and then throw it up um, in the document that I made this for. But uh, I decided to end up shading it, and I'm not, not happy that I did that, which is a very complicated way of saying um, I don't hate it. I didn't don't hate the fact that I did it. Sometimes I, I don't like um, when I shade things. I actually don't quite like how I shade things, and I'm not entirely sure how I want to be shading things. Um, sometimes I, I don't know if I'm if I legitimately dislike how I do something, or if I just feel like, I, or if I just feel the pressure of other people, um, sometimes in the art community, people, you know, they they don't like, they diss and hate certain things, and it doesn't really make so much sense. Um, but I basically shade things like it's 19, sorry, like it's 2000, like it's 2001, 2002, 2005-ish, and uh, basically by that I mean that I take basically the basic Photoshop brush and I just brush on some gradient tones and that's very out of style right now but it, it's what I do and it kind of works um, I'd like to learn to, to paint a little bit more detailed but I mean my end goal here is to um, you know make characters and stuff that are gonna be animated so 
they're gonna have to be drawn 24 times a second sometimes um, and you know that means developing a shading style that can be done 24 frames a second and there's just it's just not feasible to uh, you know hand paint in oils that sort of stuff but then again when I'm doing stills like this maybe maybe I should have a very nice you know painterly painterly style but uh, didn't really matter so much for um, for this because it was gonna be a quick thing and I didn't really have time to be um, finicky with it like uh, when I was doing these here the the shading part right here I basically had uh, 40 minutes before I had to go off to work to get everything done the uh, the the flat tones and the shading so I didn't really have time for reflection on what I was doing I just did what I usually do or how I remembered it because it's been a while since I've actually shaded digitally um, so yeah I wasn't even using my, my typical layers I've got like this sort of layer layer set thing that I do where you know like I'll put the lighting the the, the shine layers on like I believe it's overlay or light and then uh, the darker layers I'll put on like uh, multiply or dark color I can't remember <laughs> it's been it's been a little bit but I like the effect that that makes and it basically means that I can usually uh, take one muted dark color or one light color and I can just smash it over most of the figure and then go in and carve out the uh, the shadow areas with an eraser and um, it, it'll just naturally uh, lighten or darken the the colors that are native to it so instead of me having to pick for example a darker red for the rose and a lighter red for the rose as opposed to a lighter and darker green it'll kind of do that for me and sometimes the results are actually quite artistic um, but in this case, I didn't really have time to uh, open a massive Photoshop file and, uh, you know, figure out what layers and percentages I did. I just um, grabbed the colors off of this reference sheet, uh, modified them a bit, and just went in and painted them on as, a, as basic paint layers. Um, and it kind of looks okay. I think there are some lost nuances, especially with Tristan's skin color. I think it came out a little bit too vibrant. Um, that's usually my MO, to be honest. I think I make uh, certain things a little too vibrant. Here I'm trying to play with like lighting and blush, and it's just not working. So I, I was going to come back to that, but I ultimately, I don't think I did. I think I just moved on to other stuff. Um, but yeah, here you go. Here you see what I say when I, uh, I say I kind of um, shade like it's the 2000s. I just got the basic Photoshop brush, and I'm just varying my opacity, or my... Um, edging and opacity just a little bit um, to make some sharp areas and some less sharp areas. It, most of it got pretty fuzzy, which I try to avoid doing because apparently that's, you know, it's kind of too too soft. But I had to rush. Um, so here I am kind of just working on the armor. You know, how, how hard do I do it? And, uh, you know, how do I get the metal shine without um, spending hours on it? Um, I am just kind of quickly doing her eyes, but then it quickly became not so quickly doing her eyes. I don't normally do those sort of little slash lines that you see me doing there, but I wanted to try it out. So here I am kind of fixing up the eye to do kind of these slash, slashy lines, and I think I left them in ultimately. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, so I move on to other stuff, and uh, I just kind of left those in. And I'm just trying to figure out here, like, you know, how soft should the edges be? How hard should the edges be? I try to do hard edges and I always seem to end up doing soft edges and I don't know why but I feel like soft edges are terrible like I'm getting judged by the art community and you know I'm gonna it's an amateur thing and you know I don't know why I don't know why is it justified is it just leftover scorn from art school I, I don't know I don't know I'm trying to unpack all that stuff man Oh, art school. I mean, it, I love art school, but you know, it also it did a number on on um, on my perception of cartooning because that wasn't really fully accepted or maybe not fully understood. They were always trying to push us to do these sort of high art, high concept things. So yeah, you could do cartooning as long as you're doing high art, high concept things. I mean, if you're trying to just literally be Disney, nobody really knew what to do with you other than try and make you not do Disney in the most subtlest, politest way ever. Um, yeah, let's not get into that. Actually, uh, nearly done here. Um, basically, from this point on, I think I just pick at and struggle with uh, the gold lighting of the armor. 
and I don't think I do a particularly good job of where I place the the shading because I really wasn't thinking about the shapes and the lighting I just wanted to get it done um, so I just kind of randomly put some stuff down and I think that kind of kind of hindered me a bit um, ultimately but uh, you know it is what it is when you rush you do things that are stupid and they don't make sense and in hindsight you know you realize what you did I hear I'm suddenly getting all like soft and mottled even though it's supposed to be kind of hard metal and that that unfortunately I don't think really gets fixed um, I do like the vibrancy of the colors I used I do kind of wish now I'd also hit it with a bit more of a muted brown um, in the shadow areas and hadn't left it all just that blindingly orange but there you go that's what I did um, once again I accidentally went way too bright with my colors but uh, you know, I, uh, I'm kind of okay with that being a problem because I do like bright colors so you know that's just part of what I do as a cartoonist I use bright colors and if I accidentally use bright colors I prefer that to accidentally using like muddied brown Anyways, guys, we're basically done here. So I'm going to show you the final image at the end here. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you like this. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more in the future. And uh, see you guys in the next episode. Bye!